ladies and gentlemen, today's topic, authentic discipleship. You know, God calls us, he calls each and every single one of us, and he overpowers us with what's called agape love. It's the descending love of God. It's his yearning for us, for relationship with us. And that love is our experience of vocation because it's, we're called to a vocation of love. So when God's grace comes down upon us and initiates that relationship, we're left with the opportunity for making a response. And let's face it, the only just response is to be his disciples. We could say, yeah, thanks for the love, don't really want it, or not now, or anything else, see you later, forget about it, you know, adios. Amigos. Exactly, but the just response is discipleship. And that discipleship has to be a living discipleship. And one of the ways that we see this living discipleship in the lives of people is through the gifts of the Holy Spirit. What are those? Well, there's ones like wisdom, understanding, right judgment, knowledge, courage, reverence, wonder and awe, those kinds of things. Those are the gifts that God gives us at our confirmation to help us to follow Christ more closely. Like when I was confirmed, I prayed specifically for the gifts of courage and wisdom. Courage because I was a super shy person and wisdom because I knew, you know, that if I had wisdom, I would understand what God was asking me to do in my life and have this capacity to see situations for what they really were. I remember at my confirmation, after being confirmed, I knelt back down in the pew and I just felt this total overwhelming presence of what could only be described as God. Something other than any other human experience I have ever had and ever had since. And I tell you something, it was so, so powerful that I realized, yeah, I really do need to like live my life a bit differently, deeper in Christ and in his love. Yeah, there's no way that we can encounter the living God and not come out changed in some way. And what that relationship with God really calls us to is to live our freedom in love. And that's a good point because, you know, when we think about freedom, it typically gets defined as either a freedom from something or a freedom of. And then, in fact, in the United States history, you know, you had James Madison who described in the Bill of Rights the freedoms of, the freedom of mm -hmm. the press, the freedom of assembly, all this kind of stuff. And then you had uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt with his four basic freedoms, where there were mostly freedoms from. Mm -hmm. But, you know, St. John of the Cross described freedom in a very radical and different way as a freedom for. He didn't think that governments or anyone ever had the capacity to liberate, to free us. But he looked at it as we're already free. And so how do we use that freedom? And that freedom justly used as a just response to the invitation of a relationship with God is a freedom that's lived in love, that's for something. A freedom to love my girlfriend, a freedom to love my family, a freedom to love my friends, a freedom to become a hockey player, a freedom to become a musician, freedom to go to the university, freedom to go to high school, freedom to drive, freedom to do... It's how I'm using my freedom. Not the fact that I am, by some authority or whatever, granted a freedom. Because then that's not really a freedom, is it? That's a permission. Or a privilege. Exactly. So, our freedom, when we live in authentic discipleship in Christ, is something that is exercised for, hopefully, the good. And the greatest good is obviously for God, for love. Mm-hmm. Because God is love, and if we're created in God's image, we are created in love, by love, and for love. And so to live in freedom, a life that is loving, is to fulfill what we're actually called to be. And that leads to true happiness. So then we use those gifts of the Holy Spirit that you just talked about. And making the different choices that we do in our life for the good. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit then makes us even freer. Yes. I mean, Scripture says, when the Son of God sets you free, you are free indeed. You know, and Jesus came that we could have life but have it abundantly. So 
God isn't asking us to do anything that's going to make us less happy, less spontaneous in life, that's going to restrict us in any way. In fact, the law of God, what God asks of us, actually frees us to be uninhibited by sin. Or, you know, it frees us to not be held back by insecurities and fears and things of that nature. And that's why I think the two that you highlighted, sister, courage and wisdom are so important. Courage. Courage to say no to what's wrong. Courage to say yes to what's good. good. And to let your yes mean yes and your no mean no, as Isaiah says. Mm -hmm. And that's really awesome. Because if you have the courage to stand up for what you truly do believe in, then you could look the devil in the face and tell him exactly where to go. And that's an important thing. That's what we have to do when we confront temptation. Mm -hmm. We have to have courage. And then wisdom Wisdom's awesome because wisdom's not just about some highfalutin forward and reverse statement like, you know, the church doesn't have a mission, the mission has the church. Okay, thank you. Catchy, true, very good, poignant, indeed. But true wisdom is actually the practical reality of how to live your life in Christ. It helps you to see things as God sees them. Exactly. And to know the difference. So thank you, and I thank all of you. We'll be praying for you. Remember, click subscribe if you want to keep your faith alive. Remember also, come and follow us. Truly follow Jesus, but follow us too on Twitter and Instagram. And remember, the spin stops here. Oh, why do you always have to I'm just joking. I'm not going to do a Bill (laughs) O'Reilly interpretation this time. But here's the reality. Love one another and you will be set free. God bless. Lord Jesus, send your Holy Spirit to inflame and impassion our faith. Help us to know and love you. Give us a deep understanding, strong strong faith, faith, and and vibrant vibrant hope that is lived wisely. Amen.